I'm Nadia Azmi and this is Nightline, the headlines. PM urges the US to be honest on Palestinian humanitarian issues. And durian prices in Malaysia expected to increase 100%. Malaysia, which condemns the unabating cruelty of the Zionist regime in the West Bank and Gaza, continues to voice protests against Israeli atrocities following the latest incident involving the murder of an Al Jazeera journalist by the Israeli military. In the presence of U.S. President Joe Biden, Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob took the opportunity to tell the White House administration to be honest in dealing with regional and international issues without discrimination. Kekejaman Israel perlu dihentikan. Malaysia juga memandang serius tentang pembunuhan kekejaman yang berlaku di Israel. Terutamanya yang baru-baru ini melibatkan juru, juru gambar, melibatkan wartawan daripada Al Jazeera yang dibunuh dengan kejam oleh tentera Israel. Malaysia's strong stand was presented by Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri himself in the final session of the ASEAN-US Special Summit in Washington, D.C. on Saturday Malaysian time. The nation's continuous commitment to the oppressed Palestinian people was also welcomed by other leaders at the two-day special summit. It was reported that Al Jazeera's veteran journalist Shirin Abu Akleh was shot dead by the Israeli military while she was reporting on a raid at a refugee camp in the West Bank. As a global power, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri stressed that the U.S. needs to prevent the oppression and killing of innocent civilians by Israel. The Prime Minister pointed out if the U.S. can take swift action on the Russia-Ukraine conflict, the same swift action should be taken on the Palestinian issue. Meanwhile, Aman Palestine Gaza CEO Engineer Omar Sayam has lauded Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri for standing firm in support of the Palestinian cause and rejecting the injustice and atrocities of the Israeli regime at the ASEAN US Special Summit. All respect and appreciation to the Malaysian Premier Minister Mr. Ismail Sabri for raising the Palestinian issue in his meeting with U.S. President John Biden in Washington. This official support for the Palestinian cause is not new. Malaysia and its government always stand by the Palestinian people at all political and social levels. And we are sure that this support will be continued until uh, until Palestine will be free and liberated, and until the uh, restoration of rights at the international levels, and until uh, the establishment of an independent Palestine state with Jerusalem as its capital. There has been a significant increase in hand, foot and mouth disease, HFMD, in the country, with a total of 28,957 cases reported for the period since last January until Friday, May 13th, nationwide, compared to only 4,239 cases for the whole of last year. Following this, Health Minister Kairi Jamaluddin said the respective district health offices will determine whether there is a need to close any childcare centres or kindergartens within the area to curb the spread of HFMD. Tetapi memang dijangkakan sebab tahun lepas banyak perintah kawalan pergerakan tak boleh keluar. So sekarang ini bila dibenarkan keluar lebih-lebih lagi dengan dibuka sektor pendidikan dan sebagainya maka kes uh, HFMD ini akan uh, HFMD ini akan meningkat. Kairi said this after attending an ideal fitri open house in Rembau Negeri Sembilan on Saturday. He added that the increase of HFMD cases is also a reminder to the public to take care of personal hygiene because for 2 years the country have never thought of any disease other than COVID-19. 
He also advised parents to make use of the My Sejahtera application as it contained a new feature which provides information on cases of infectious diseases, including hotspots, which can be helpful for the public to mitigate the risk of infection. Parents are also urged to refer their children to the nearest clinic or hospital if they develop symptoms such as fever and rashes on their hand, foot and mouth, as well as avoid taking them to crowded places such as public swimming pools, markets, shopping malls and bus stations. Durian prices in Malaysia are expected to increase 100% during this year's durian season. Deputy Agriculture and Food Industry Minister Datuk Sri Ahmad Hamza said the price hike was because of a 50% drop in durian production due to weather conditions. Sebenarnya pada ketika ini tu, mula dah patut dah musim durian. Patut dia kita bulan lima ni dah musim durian. Tapi kita dapat bahawa kita jangka musim durian pada ketika ini mungkin terjejas oleh kerana cuaca. Yang pertama, yang kedua oleh kerana bahan-bahan baju yang semakin meningkat. Yang ketiganya mungkin pekerja-pekerja. Datuk Seri Ahmad said this to reporters at the Ideal Fitri Open House at Pengkalan Umbai in Melaka on Saturday. He also explained that the ministry did not impose a limit to control the price of durians as it depended on production and supply. He added that Pulau Pinang and Perak have acknowledged the estimated 50% drop in production while a Durian Planters Association has issued a report that not only prices for Blackthorn and Musang King durians will rise, but also Durian Kampung as well. Prices for the Blackthorn variety are expected to exceed 100 ringgit a kilogram, while Musang King will be priced around 60 ringgit to 80 ringgit a kilogram, depending on grade, compared to 30 ringgit to 40 ringgit a kilogram previously. Meanwhile, the Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Ministry, KPD and HEP, is conducting a cross-ministry approach to address the issue of rising vegetable prices as it occurs at the production stage. Its minister, Datuk Sri Alexander Nantalingi, said the surge in vegetable prices in the market was due to several factors, such as rising fertilizer prices, logistics costs and labour shortage. Dr. Sri Nanta said his ministry will cooperate with the agriculture and food industry to resolve the price hike issue. He also has instructed his ministry's enforcement personnel to conduct investigations if there is any profiteering activity. Strict action will be taken under the Price Control and Anti-Profiteering Act if traders were found taking unreasonable profits or have profiteered. Previously, Federation of Malaysian Vegetables Farmers Association Chairman Lim Sir Kui had revealed that Vegetable prices had risen between 30 to 50 percent since last ideal fee tree due to the lack of supplies as well as the increase in fertilizer prices. Fitch Solutions, Country Risk and Industry Research is expecting another 25 basis points worth of interest rate hikes. In a report on Thursday, the firm said the economy is still likely to post a robust recovery in 2022, for which it forecasts 5.6% real GDP growth, providing the central bank with sufficient policy room to normalize its monetary policy. Economists we spoke to, on the other hand, said that if there is another hike in the OPR soon, there is a potential that it can affect the current recovery. There is a, a lot of concern about high inflation in the United States and in Europe. Inflation in the US is about 8.5% and inflation uh, in Europe is also very high. Last week the Bank of England said that inflation in the UK would uh, be above 10%, which is the first time since the 1980s. So it is very concerning for them. But here in Malaysia, we are nowhere close to that level of inflation. Uh, the headline rate of inflation in February and March here in Malaysia was only 2.2%. And if we exclude oil, uh, and if we look at the core rate of inflation, both of those measures of inflation are only around 2%. So actually, we have very modest inflation here in Malaysia. And that, what that means is we don't need to follow the same anti-inflationary policy of raising interest rates. And if we do that, there is a potential that it would hit very hard 
the current recovery, which is only just getting off the ground. As the central bank aims to rebuild policy buffers and maintain ringgit stability, another OPR hike may be inevitable. I think the chances of another round of 25 basis points is quite likely. Um, looking at the recent number uh, for the first quarter GDP, I think uh, it's clearly uh, uh, an indication that the economy has gained further traction and uh, we could see that the labour markets, you know, um, has actually improved based on the jobless rates, which continue to decline from 4.3% in the fourth quarter to 4.1%. So what it means is that the, the ability for the economy to absorb and to create more jobs and be able to, you know, um, uh, to sustain uh, is quite uh, uh, evident. And then, and then in that sense, um, there is a clear uh, uh, justifications that uh, uh, monetary policy accommodations would need to, de- to, be, to be removed, so it will be in line with the current state of the economy. Since Malaysia doesn't really have um, anywhere like the same pressure of inflation as we're seeing in Europe and the United States, and because the recovery that we're seeing is only just starting and many companies are really only just getting back into shape, and because we have this additional debt and an increased amount of debt for both consumers and for companies, it would be very dangerous for us to think about raising interest rates. Now, there is a temptation to say, well, if the Americans raise interest rates and the Europeans raise interest rates, Malaysia has to follow suit. But the only real argument for that would be the effect on the exchange rate. Now, the exchange rate is an extremely volatile measure, and we don't really Um, have much of an effect on the exchange rate through interest rate policy. In fact, if we raised uh, interest rates and that were to stifle the burgeoning recovery that we're just about seeing, then that may may make uh, international investors look at Malaysia as an economy that isn't going to recover and that may go into a deeper slowdown or even a recession in the future. Coming up after this short break, Sheikh Khalifa laid to rest in Abu Dhabi Cemetery. Don't go away. have unanimously appointed Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan as the president of the hereditarily ruled nation. The rulers of the country's seven sheikhdoms made the decision at a meeting held in Al Mushrif Palace in Abu Dhabi on Saturday. It comes after the previous president, Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, passed away on Friday, aged 73. The speed of Saturday's announcement just a day later appeared designed to show unity and reassure the world of the stability of this crucial oil and gas producing nation that hosts Western military forces. The transition of power also marks only the third time this U.S. allied nation has selected a president since becoming an independent nation in 1971. 
The last came in 2004 when Khalifa took over from his and Muhammad's father, Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan, a month after his death. 61-year-old Sheikh Muhammad had been serving as the UAE's de facto president since a 2014 stroke led his half-brother Khalifa to disappear from public view. In the meantime, Sheikh Muhammad led the funeral for Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan. The body of Sheikh Khalifa was carried by military escort and handed over to mourners at the entrance to the Sheikh Sultan bin Zayed Mosque in Abu Dhabi. Inside the mosque, a service was led by Sheikh Muhammad before being continued at the burial site. The UAE's Ministry of Presidential Affairs had previously announced a 40-day period of mourning and a three-day suspension of work in all ministries and the private sector, beginning Friday, including flags to be flown at half-staff. In the meantime, Al-Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al-Mustafa Bin Shah has given his consent for the personal flag of Yang Dipertuan Agung to be flown at half-mast at Istana Negara for five consecutive days starting Saturday. Comptroller of the Royal Household for Istana Negara, Datuk Ahmad Fadil Shamsuddin, said this was to signify the King's mourning over the passing of Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan on Friday. In a statement on Saturday, Datu Ahmad Fadil said Al Sultan Abdullah also ordered the Federal Territories Islamic Religious Council and the Department of Islamic Development Malaysia to hold Yasin and Tahlil recitation ceremonies at mosques in the Federal Territories for three days beginning Saturday. The statement added the king also called on his subjects to pray for Sheikh Khalifa's soul to be blessed and placed among the righteous and those who do good deeds. In India, at least 27 people were killed and dozens others were injured following a massive fire at a four-storey commercial building in West New Delhi. Police have arrested two people, the owners of the company, suspected of flouting fire safety regulations on Saturday. Meanwhile, authorities said more than 65 people were injured, including those who jumped from the burning building to save their lives and those who sustained burns. They were all being treated at a nearby hospital. About 70 others have been rescued. It was reported that the third floor of the building has not yet been searched and more dead bodies are expected to be recovered. Offering condolences, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi promised 200,000 rupees in compensation for the victims next of kin. Young Tigers held to a draw. Updates from Hanoi when we come back.
Hanoi Sea Games. Malaysia continue to harvest medals in Hanoi as they bag two more goals on Saturday for a total of 13 gold medals so far. Malaysia's first gold of the day came from Hammer Queen Grace Wong. The 22-year-old Sarawakian claimed Malaysia's first gold medal in track and field in Hanoi after winning the hammer throw event with a clearance of 57.30 metres. The 2017 SEA Games champion reclaimed the gold medal from her Thai rival, Ming Kamwan Kumpon, who recorded 50.28 metres to finish second. Another Thai, Panwat Gimsrung, took the bronze. Another national hammer thrower, Jackie Wong, then contributed Malaysia's second gold in track and field. The 29-year-old's effort of 66.49 metres was enough for him to respect the gold medal from Thailand's Kitipong Bun Mawan. Jackie's fellow countryman, Sadat Marzuki Ajisan, took the bronze. In the 2017 Kuala Lumpur Sea Games, Jackie won the gold but he finished second to Kitipong two years later in the Manila edition. In the men's football event, Malaysia booked a spot in the semi-finals despite a two-all draw with Singapore in their Group B match at Tien Throne Stadium. Malaysia took the lead in the fourth minute with a goal from Lukman Hakim Shamsuddin following some poor defending by Singapore. The Lions, however, equalised three minutes later through Shah Shahiran before Harry's Rizal Garrett Stewart gave Singapore the advantage in the 78th minute, finishing off an inviting free kick from Shah Shahirat. The match was about to end when Faiz Amir salvaged a point from Malaysia as he headed home Mukairi Ajmal's corner kick. With tensions running high, a fight broke out between players minutes before the final whistle, but no cards were issued. After this breather, slaughtering approval for Australian halal abattoir suspended. penetrate the United Kingdom and European markets with promotion through a network of restaurants and distributors of food products, especially those owned by Malaysians. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department for Special Functions, Datuk Dr. Abdul Latif Ahmad, who led the Sabah Bumiputra Products Promotion and Sales Mission to the UK from May 9th to 16th, said the government is committed in supporting the recovery of small and medium entrepreneurs after the economic disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Haliza Hashim reports. The One Stop Centre for Global Entrepreneurs, GROPAC, signed a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, with nine UK and European distributors, wholesalers and online retailers last week. It aims to create cooperation and export opportunities for products of Sabah small and medium enterprises, SMEs, into the international market. 
UK strategic partners who ink the agreements include Chuang Li Supermarket, or Malaysia Halal Street UK, Aditya and Co, and premium company Farm Foods Limited. Glowpack is a program under the Bumiputra Entrepreneur Development Fund established through a strategic partnership between Yayasan Sabah Group and the Bumiputra Affirmative Action Unit Teraju and aims at assisting Sabah Bumiputra entrepreneurs. Mereka berhadapan dengan masalah untuk masuk ke uh, peruntutan. Teraju boleh beli produk-produk ini daripada pengusaha-pengusaha uh, dan pengeluar di Sabah. Kita beli dulu dan kita uh, letakkan di uh, alur outlet uh, rangkaian yang dipunyai outlet dan restoran yang dipunyai oleh orang Malaysia untuk mereka rasa the Taste of Sabah campaign, which was launched at the event, saw a selection of food products by the state entrepreneurs being placed in 11 restaurants in London. Currently, Growpack has 15 entrepreneurs and aims to market products worth 60 million ringgit within the next five years. Glopek, Yayasan Sabah ni kita bantu dari segi packaging and labeling. Mereka tahu tapi mereka tidak tahu macam mana cara-cara mendapat certification. So itu kita bantu dan juga kita akan bantu untuk dapatkan halal. Sebab kita akan kerjasama dengan Halal Corporation apa ini development di mana kita bagi tahu usahawan-usahawan biar mereka ada punya sertifikasi halal dan mereka mendapat wider market. Glopack serves as the contact point that engages with all business-related agencies and governing bodies in the targeted markets, as well as suppliers and buyers, to disseminate verified information and business opportunities to participating Sabah SMEs. Halisa Hashim, TV3, London. The slaughtering approval granted by Malaysia to a halal certified company in Australia, Thomas Foods International Lobethal, has been suspended with immediate effect until a thorough investigation is done. Islamic Development Department of Malaysia, Jakim, Director General, Datuk Hakimah Muhammad Yusof, said the decision was taken following a special meeting between the Veterinary Services Department, JPV, Jakim, and Australian Authority, the Department of Agriculture, Water and the Environment, DAWE, on Friday. In a joint statement with JPV on Saturday, Datuk Hakim said Jakim has conducted an investigation on the slaughterhouse and held a series of discussions with Australian authorities. Jakim has also arranged a meeting with Pertubuhan Kemasyarakatan Rakyat Malaysia, Pekemas, to get more information. It was reported recently that there have been violations of Standard Operating Procedures, SOP, for halal slaughter by a company in Australia which had received approval from Jakim based on video evidence and photos which were attested to by slaughter workers at the company. Datu Hakima said the halal certification body responsible for halal supervision of slaughterhouses in Australia, the Supreme Islamic Council of Halal Meat in Australia, Incorporated, will be given a show cause letter. She said the council would also likely face revocation of its status as a halal certification body recognised by Jakim if it was found not complying with the requirements of Malaysian halal standards and procedures. Nightline draws to a close this time around. Let's take a look at the world's longest suspension bridge, which has finally opened in the Czech Republic. The 721-metre-long bridge is built at an altitude of more than 1,100 metres above sea level, which connects two ridges on the mountains and hangs up to 95 metres above the valley below. With that, I'm Nadia Azmi. Thank you for watching and stay safe.